Hi guys, it's Wasabi Fold here again with part 5 of the Embedding Marijoa Theory series. If you have not seen parts 1 through the 4, go and check them out. There is a full playlist on my channel. Now in this video, I will be talking about the potential changes in the world government structure that could occur after this arc where the Star Hats have invaded them, the Grand Fleet has shown up, and several world government kingdoms could also resign or rescind their position or have it rescinded for them either way it doesn't really matter from being part of the world government namely Alabasta and the other kingdoms that I mentioned in part 4 however I think there's another thing that could change in the world's pecking order and that is the abolition of the Shichibukai system now this was talked about on Dressros and this was a big thing when we first met Fujitora that that was Fujitora's goal I think that is a direct setup to what could occur at reverie this year um because let's just look at the current state of the shichibukai we have five currently you know law left and doflamingo was defeated and that leaves us with miha boa hancock kuma buggy and edward weevil which is still a pretty strong group um overall however i do think that edward weevil as a shichibukai his role is short-lived if you just look at his character design he is definitely a joke character from oda I mean, I don't think any Straw Hat fan is particularly excited over the prospect of Edward Weevil actually being Whitebeard's son. There's something up there, and I would not be shocked or surprised. And I won't get into the specifics because I do think I will do a whole theory on that. But I, I would not be surprised if Edward Weevil is not what he seems, and he will not even last past the next arc, which is going to be the hunt for Marco. And I, I'm pretty certain that Edward Weevil will either not last as a Shichibukai as terms of the position or not last as a character beyond that. It, I don't think it really particularly matters either way. So there goes four. Now we're down to Hancock, Mihawk, Kuma and Buggy. But I think Hancock's position as I talked about in part one could also be called into question if people do a little bit of digging into how Luffy was actually able to invade and fell down or how Luffy was able to get back to Sabidi Archipelago you'd find that the Kuja Pirates were there in both instances and Hancock's strange behavior during the war where she seemed to be defending and defeating pacifists it seems like it's hard to tell where her allegiances lie and I think the world government will agree with that and I think if they do a little bit of digging and find out that she was the one that helped Straw Hat Luffy I do think that her position will also be called into question and if they find out she's a slave well then she's done they're going to take her back to Marijoa I'm saying that Paul well, Hancock could go very quickly as far as Reverie is concerned and Edward Beaver could go very quickly and before we can even replace any Shijibukai the world government would be down to three less than half a roster Miha, Kuma and Buggy it's gonna look as impressive because you have a, a mindless robot a weakling and the world's strongest swordsman instead of a group of seven extremely strong pirates and I don't think the Shijibukai will be considered capable of maintaining the balance that they're supposed to be responsible for and I think with the PR disaster of Doflamingo and public perception over the world government letting him run amok on Dressrosa and oppress these people that Fujitora made sure got into the public eye. They might have to do something political about the Shichibukai just to appease the wider public and I'm thinking they could abolish them. Even Mihawk and Kuma. Kuma sent the Straw Hats away so far apart that they were supposed to be able to never come back. But where did he send them? And if he sent them to places where they could get stronger and improve their skills, then whose side was he really on? Is he really in the interest of the world government? Kuma showed up there of his own free will. Then of course there's Mihawk, who assisted Zoro and trained him over the time skip and basically harbored Zoro. I mean, when it is his job to kill dangerous pirates that could affect the world government, I mean, Mihawk could just kill Zoro right there. So there is a question now of, are any of them actually loyal? And I think what might happen is that the world government might just say, okay, you know what? These Shichibukai are not loyal to us. Let's just end this system altogether and move and put our investment and resources into weapons and move forward with futuristic weapons as the future of the world government's defense against pirates. Um, and that, of course, is foreshadowed by Fujitora's statements in Dressrosa itself and what he actually did to make sure 
that the crimes of one of the Shichibukai became known in the public eye and how that would reverberate and cause problems throughout the world. So I think there's a lot of stuff to discuss at Reverie. And I think we will see a new world government who are more interested in bolstering the marine strength, not just in numbers or strong individuals, but also in weaponry. And I think we might see a new age of piracy in One Piece where we move towards scientific weapons, have the science division play a more important role, maybe get funded more, and develop more powerful weapons, new upgraded pacifists, and maybe even complete the giantification project that they had big up working on. So I'm thinking that the world government as a whole will move away from having pirates do their dirty work um, simply because it doesn't seem to be working and move towards something that is better for actually stopping pirates. So that's what I think could happen um, as far as the world government structure. But there's also, obviously, I talked about in part three of um, world government commander Chief Kong potentially being resigned or fired and a kind of even going up further, but that depends on if Kong will actually be the antagonist of the arc. So those are my thoughts for what will happen as far as the world government's power structure is concerned. Some other things could happen. We don't know what the national treasure is. We don't know what the full extent of the kingdoms that they have under them are. I mean, how many more groups like the Vinsmoats do the world governments have working for them who, are, who don't have a kingdom and are supposed to be kept in secrecy? So there's a lot of things the world government could do and bring out of the shadows into the light to replace the power of the Shichibukai. So I don't think it is that much of a loss for the story. If anything, it makes the story more streamlined and not just pirates versus pirate mercenaries versus marines, but just pirates versus world government end the story and moves the story into a final stage and a final climax very nicely. So that is what I think will occur. Thank you guys for listening. This was the end of part five in the Invading Marijoa series. This is Wasabi Fold signing out.